Well, good morning and a warm welcome to you as we gather together to worship the living God. By way of announcement, a few things just to mention. The prayer meeting Sunday mornings at 11.15 in the side room here, the committee room, uh, and you're welcome to join there with others. Sunday school and Bible classes at the normal times of 10.45 in Cloven Eden here uh, in the hall across the way, and then at Kinnego at 3 in the afternoon. The May offering envelopes, I forgot to mention uh, this last few Sundays in May, but the May offering going to the Church Development Fund, raising funds aware uh, uh, that there'll be projects in the not too distant future to, to attend to. So the May offering to the, going to the Church Development Fund. There's a list in the vestibule table regarding catering at uh, the Jubilee celebration in Loch Gaul on Saturday the 4th of June. Uh, if you take a look at that and see what's been asked for there uh, to, to to help out with that celebration on the 4th of June. Uh, speak to Kathleen Orr or Heather Bell uh, or Emily Bell about that if you have any questions. Uh, children's Church after the, the children's talk and hymn over in the minor hall. Mission envelopes in the Sundays of May uh, supporting uh, the work that the Cowans are involved in. The, the Cowans are supported through United Appeal that, that we give to at our harvest offering. Uh, but supporting the projects, the missions uh, that, that they're engaged in as they reach out into that the semi-nomadic community and the little villages surrounding the area where they live. Tonight in Derry Crew at 7.30, uh, in Derry Crew Mission, all Raymond Adams speaking there. Then Wednesday of this week, a 7 o'clock Kirk Session meeting, 7.30 committee meeting in the, in the committee room here. And then Wednesday, uh, at, at 8.30 on Wednesday as well, the annual general meeting or AGM in the meeting house here and that's open to everyone. Uh, as part of that, we need to approve uh, uh, the, the accounts for 2021. So that's Wednesday evening, three different times, uh, what gathering on Wednesday evening. Christian Endeavour meetings have concluded for this term. The Youth Club meets Friday at 8.15 in the hall. And then just for notice of the, the, the walks on the Thursday evenings on the 2nd and 16th of June. And Sunday the 12th of June, is our Children's Day service, and Leslie Reed will be along, Leslie and the family home from Mexico City. Um, Saturday, the 25th of June at 6.30, the barbecue in Local Park in support of the, the, the ministry among Romanians in our land, and Bally Bay gospel, Country Gospel Singers will be along at that. Holiday Bible Club, the 28th uh, of March, Monday, the 28th, 6, or June, 6.30. And the Youth Summer Scheme, 15th of August onwards. Those should be a printed version of them available in the vestibule or they're available on the website as well for you there. We gather to worship the Lord uh, and our call to worship today comes from Psalm 145. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. We're going to sing God's praise our opening hymn, Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God. Let us worship God.
Thank you to those leading us in song of praise unto God. Let's come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our loving Father in heaven, we do pray for that work of your Holy Spirit in all our hearts and lives. Lord, speak, we pray, through your word and shine your light into our lives and strengthen us in your mercy. For we feel our frailty, Lord, and we're mindful of our waywardness, of the sins of our hearts. And Father, the sins that others maybe know nothing of. And Father, we sin in our thinking, in our actions. We sin with our words. We sin, Lord, even without realizing we're sinning. And often we sin realizing it and willfully doing that which we know we ought not to do. And we thank you with you there is forgiveness for sinners like us. That forgiveness is full and is free to us at the cost of the death of our Lord Jesus on the cross. And so your people are redeemed not with silver or gold, but with something far more precious, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, Christ Jesus. Lord, as we gather here this day, May the eyes of our heart be enabled to see and to look by faith unto Jesus and live. Lord, grant that gift of faith to each head bowed here this day. Move among us, O gracious God, to the salvation of souls and the building up of your people. If we have drifted far from you, Lord, draw us back into the narrow path, we pray. If we have never come to know you, O oh Lord, grant us new hearts, hearts of flesh that feel your love. Grant us the wisdom to call upon your name and to seek your salvation while it may be found. Father, we thank you for every mercy you have bestowed upon us, for the many things we take for granted, Lord. We thank you that we have food to eat and homes to shelter in. We thank you, Lord, for the love of those around about us who care for us and help us, whether in our families or in the church fellowship or in the wider community. We thank you, Lord, for the kindness of many. And we pray, Lord, help us to look to the needs of others, to be mindful of others around about us. And may we even be praying for those around about us just now. Lord, draw near. For we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're reading from Judges chapter 6, verses 11 to 27, and Hebrews 11, 32 to 34. Judges 6, from verse 11. In Hebrews, where we'll be reading and looking in a few moments, Gideon is mentioned along with others in the book of Judges, and their faith in Almighty God. And we see the reality as we read of Gideon, we see the reality of Gideon's weakness and frailty and doubts and fears, and yet also the reality of God drawing near and faith in the living God in spite of the fears of Gideon. Judges 6 verse 11 let us hear God's word. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abrazite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, 
and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. And he said to him, If now I have found favour in your eyes, then show me a sign that it is you who speak with me. Please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And he said, I will stay till you return. So Gideon went into his house and prepared a young goat and unleavened cakes from an ephah of flour. And the meat he put in a basket and the broth he put in a pot and brought them to him under the terebinth and presented them. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes and put them on this rock and pour the broth over them. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and unleavened cakes and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes and the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord and Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear, you shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is peace, Jehovah Shalom. To this day it still stands at Ophrah, which belongs to the Aborazites. That night the Lord said to him, Take your father's bull and the second bull, seven years old, and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the Asher that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold here, with stones laid in due order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the Asher that you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the men of the town to do it by day, he did it by night. And turning into Hebrews 11, verse 32 to 34. Hebrews 11, verse 32, we read, And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness and became mighty in war and put foreign armies to flight. And in there, verse 34, we thank God for these readings from his word. Amen. Girls and boys, we were reading in God's word about a man called Gideon. I don't know if we have any Gideons here today. Hands up if you've got Gideon in your name, either at the start or the middle or anywhere. Don't see any hands going up just yet. That must be a name that'll come back into fashion somewhere along the way. Gideon. And the title of the, the slide, and these, these pictures are used from a, a website called Free Bible Images, and it's there for all to use if you take a look at it. There's some very useful material on it for those that are presenting children's talks in one way or another. But it says there, Gideon learns to be bold for God. Well, when the story begins, Gideon feels any, anything but bold. You see, God's people are in a mess. God had brought them out of Egypt, out of slavery. He had brought them into the promised land that he had given to them. But now they have turned away from God. They're even building idols and bowing down and worshipping them. These people whom God has saved and delivered have turned away and are worshipping idols, gods that the people of the land that they've entered into would have worshipped. Baal and Asherah. And so God has allowed the Midianites to come and, and trouble his people. For seven years they've been coming and at harvest time they came and they stole much. And the people are in fear and now at last they have cried out to the Lord for help. They've cried to God for help, to the true and living God. And then we read about this one man, Gideon. And he's threshing wheat. Now, some of you may have seen that take place in your younger days or maybe you've been in some sort of venue where they're reenacting it. And whatever way it might have happened here years ago, it probably was different than Israel years ago. 
But on this occasion, you know where Gideon is found? He's in a wine press. Now, that's not a place you would normally go to thresh wheat because there'd be no breeze there. You have no room really to do what you need to do there. He's there because he's hiding away from Midian and the enemy and afraid of losing the grain. And the angel of the Lord comes to him and speaks to him and calls him, calls Gideon a mighty man of valor or a mighty warrior. And Gideon feels anything but a mighty man or a mighty warrior. But the angel of the Lord calls him this and means it because by faith Gideon is going to do mighty things in God's name. And the angel of the Lord tells Gideon that I'm going to save Israel through you. You're going to be the one who will bring salvation, deliverance from all these enemies. It's going to be through you. And Gideon says, in effect, that could not happen. Really, he's saying, do you know who I am? That couldn't happen. Do you know my family? Do you know my place in my family? I'm the least in my family. In my family, oh, the weakest clan in my tribe. That couldn't happen. But the angel of the Lord says to Gideon, if you think of five words in our English translation, if you take your thumb and your four fingers and start with a thumb, this is what the angel of the Lord says to Gideon. I will be with you. I will be with you. That's why Gideon can be strong, mighty. The Lord says, I will be with you. I will be with you. And still Gideon doesn't really think it's possible. This man of faith seems very, very weak at this point in his life. And girls and boys, for all of us who put our trust in the Lord Jesus, there will be times in our lives when we feel very, very weak. Anything but strong. And the angel of the Lord talks on with Gideon. And Gideon says, now I want you to wait here to assure me that it is really the Lord speaking. And he goes and he wants to bring a fellowship meal to the angel of the Lord. And he goes and he brings a, a goat that has been slaughtered as part of the meal. He puts it in a basket, some, some broth as well, and some unleavened bread. And this fellowship meal, this offering he's bringing, this gift he's bringing to the angel of the Lord. And fire comes and consumes it. Now that's a sign when fire takes the offering. That's a sign of God being pleased with it. Of God taking it to himself. It's not that God needed food to strengthen him. But God delighted in the offering that was brought. And Gideon now knows that he's in the presence of the living God. And he falls down in fear. But the Lord says to him, peace. You will not die even though you have seen me. You will not die, says the angel of the Lord, the Son of God. And Gideon calls the place, the Lord is peace. And the angel of the Lord, God speaking through the angel of the Lord, had told Gideon to go and pull down those, all, those idols, those false gods, Baal and Asherah, that your father and others have set up. Go and pull them down. Take one of the bulls. Tie, tie the idols to the bull and pull them down and smash them to pieces and take another bull and offer it on an altar to me, to the living God. Now a sign that Gideon had faith is this, he did what he was told to do. He did it. But you see the picture, what time of day was he doing it? Was it in the sunshine? Not at all. In the middle of the night. He gathered ten others with him, ten servants, and went and they tore down Baal and Asherah idols, these false gods that were no gods, broke them up, took the wooden Asherah, broke it up to use it to light the fire to offer that second bull on the altar he had built up then, an altar to the living God. He did what he was told, but he was still scared, frightened of the enemy, frightened of the people of Israel and what they might think. And he had reason to be frightened. You know what happened the next morning? Many of the people of Israel went to his father's house to Gideon's father, battered on the door and wanted him to hand over Gideon because they wanted to harm Gideon because of what he had done to their idols. That's how far astray the people were. But amazingly now, Gideon's father takes a stand. His son's faith seems to have put strength into the father. And his father said, well, if these idols Gideon has pulled down or anything, if they're really gods, they're able to defend themselves. But if not, why worship them? And so 
the people calmed down and Gideon went on to blow the trumpet and to call some of the people of God together to fight against Midian. And they looked at the size of the army, the enemy army. And the enemy army numbered 135,000 from different nations from the east they had come. 135,000. And the people who had come behind Gideon, amazingly, there were many of them, 32,000. Now, 32 against 135, that doesn't sound great, sure, it doesn't, outnumbered. And then God looked at it all and said, but there are too many here, Gideon, too many people for me, because I want you and the people to know that the victory will come because of me, God says, not because of them. And so he tells Gideon, tell the people, if any of them are afraid to go home, and out of the 32,000, you know how many went home afraid? 22,000. How many are left? 10,000. And God says, there's still too many, Gideon. Still too many. Tell the people to go and drink at the stream. And those that take up water with their hand to their mouth like a dog, lapping the water up and aware of what's going on around about them. Those that take up the water with their hand to their mouth, I will keep. And those who dip their head down in and drink from the water, we will send home. And how many lap the water with their hand, 300, 300. And God says, with these 300, Gideon, I will save you and your people. Now Gideon was still trembling, feeling his weakness, this man of faith, this mighty man of valor, still feeling his weakness. And girls and boys, that is often the reality for you or for me as we trust in the Lord Jesus in the face of all the things that go on around about us and within us, we feel our weakness. And God comes and strengthens weak souls. And so the Lord said to Gideon, if you're, if you're wondering, Gideon, if you're unsure of how this battle will go, take your servant Purah and in the night time and go down to the camp of Midian to sneak down and listen in as to what's happening. And so Gideon and the servant go down and you see them standing in the background and they're listening and they overhear one Midianite speaking to another. And the man says, I had a dream. And this huge loaf rolled down into her camp and over, 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 overpowered us and the tents. And the man asked, what does this mean? And the other said, it means that Gideon and his army will defeat us. And fear was spreading through the people. God had spread fear through the people. And Gideon and his servant heard and they worshipped. Gideon worshipped. Worshipped the Lord and praised him and prayed to him. Went back to the 300, divided them into three groups of 100 each and told them what to do, what God had told them to do. Take the trumpet or the ram's horn in, in one hand and take a, a flaming torch in another that's covered over with a, a clay pot so that it will not be seen and immediately as they go into the midst of the people, the enemy. And then when you get into the midst, break the clay pot so that the flaming torch is seen and blow the trumpet and cry for the Lord and for Gideon. A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And, and this happened. Gideon believed and he did what he was told to do and the 300 with him. And all the enemy, they turned on each other in fear and they killed each other and others fled and the 300 pursued them and defeated them. And God gave the victory. You see, it is God's strength that we need. The reality of what God had said to Gideon was sufficient. I will be with you. The Lord, the strength of Gideon and his people. And the Lord will be with you as you trust in him, girls and boys, he has promised to be with you and whatever the difficulties you're fighting, it will not be an army of Midianites I don't think that you're fighting and struggling with. Whatever the sins you're battling against, whatever the, the troubles that you might be going through, the Lord has said, I will be with you and I will be your strength. The God who gives strength to Gideon will give strength to you today as you trust in him, as you believe in him, as you take him at his word, as you take him at his word. And we're going to sing of Almighty God after a moment or two. But first, we're going to, uh, Zara is going to explain something just to, in regard to Prize Day uh, and the way that uh, our Children's Day prizes will be given out this, this year. So Zara will come and explain just some of that.
A slightly different way of working um, in the morning sun school with regard to prizes this year. And I just wanted to let um, mums and dads and all of you know how that's going to work. Um, ordinarily, I would have given the children a book token, um, able, able to be redeemed in any of the Faith Mission bookshops. But this year, um, there's a wee voucher in here and they have to go to the Faith Mission in Portadown, um, present their token, choose their prize, and they'll retain that. And then hopefully they'll be distributed um, on prize day and we'll get to see... And um, what all the wee ones get. Um, prizes, as always, are always um, attributed to attendance. Um, and we've had really great attendance um, in the Sunday school in the morning. So thank you very much, parents, for bringing your children along so faithfully. Um, so I'll just run through this really quickly. There's a lot of kids that are um, were at Sunday school today, but just due to many different reasons, they just aren't able to be here today. So I'll call out the names just so you know who they all are. And they have already got them or will get these wee tokens. Okay, so if I say your name, come on ahead up and get your wee prize. Um, so we've got Ellie and Molly McMathen. They're not here today. Um, Isla Johnston. Can you come up, Isla, Fed? Eva and Zach Johnston. Eva and Zach Johnston. These are in no particular order, but we have Freddie Johnston next as well. <laughs> Freddie. Yeah. Uh, Bryce and Harvey Cardwell, they're not with us. Um, We've got Jensen and Madison Irwin as well. They're not with us today. Um, Isaac McKinstry. Andrew Boyd. Toby Irwin. Not today. I'll get that to Toby. Um, we've got Madison Irwin as well. I think I said that. Rachel Triton. Noah and then Rosie McKinstry. Um, I have Ellie and Jesse's shirts, but that will be forwarded on to them as well. So that's everything. And um, if you could do that by the 4th of June, for me, that would be really great. We get the prizes selected by then. That would be super. Thank you, Ina. Thank you, Zora. We look forward to seeing the, what you select in the shops, what the young people select in Portadown with those tokens. We're going to sing God's praise, uh, the, the hymn El Shaddai. El Shaddai means God Almighty. El, El Elyon, if you bring the words up there, we'll, we'll, we'll see some of them. You're speaking, you're speaking Hebrew, I think. El Elyon Na Adonai, as far as I remember, means God Most High, O Lord. And then Er Kam Kan Na Adonai, I love you, O Lord. Adonai is Lord.
We come to the Lord as we intercede on behalf of others. Let's pray together. Let's pray. O Lord God, the Almighty, we are so glad that it is to you we come, El Shaddai, God Almighty, God Most High. And Lord, may we want to tell you from the depths of our heart that we love you, even as we've been singing these words in another language, that I love you, Lord. And Father, may there be a love in our hearts that grows for you and for others around about us. And Lord, we know that for that to happen, we need you to shed your love abroad in our hearts by the power of your Spirit. And the fruit of your Spirit is love. Lord, we live in a world full of needy people. And we are needy people. And we come to you, our gracious God. And we pray for your mercy upon us, Lord. We pray that in your mercy you would cause people of our land and of this world to cry out to you. O oh Lord, we pray that a burden would come upon souls to cry to you. Even as you sent the Midianites to the people of Israel long ago to turn their hearts toward heaven. So, Lord, we realize in your providence you send many a thing our way to waken us up spiritually to our utter need of God. And so we pray, Father, not for comfort for our loved ones, but that our loved ones would seek your face and find true comfort in you. For you're the God of all comfort. Father, we're so inclined to seek earthly comforts, fleeting things that cannot truly satisfy our last. And we pray, Lord, that your people would see afresh this day that you are the portion of your people and you are our joy and our strength is in you. And the joy of the Lord is the strength of your people. So move among us, we pray, dear Father, and humble us afresh that we might call upon your precious name, that we would truly seek you. Father, grant a liberty in prayer to your redeemed. Grant a burden to pray. Grant, O God, that desire to seek your face and to call upon your name. And as we come and intercede, Lord, we intercede in the precious name of Jesus, the one who intercedes for us at your right hand even now. And we come trusting in his finished work. For we, like the people of old who trusted and believed in you, we feel our weakness and our frailty, and we need your might and your grace and your power. Strengthen our weak faith, dear Lord, and strengthen your church this day. That your church might bear witness to the greatness of your grace and your holiness and goodness and love. Father, we pray for those who care for the vulnerable within our land. We pray, give us a concern for those who cannot speak for themselves or defend themselves. Give us a concern for justice. We hear many calls for justice in our land and hearts are yearning for it. And give us a concern for justice and a realization that with you there is justice, there is righteousness. You are the God who does what is right. And Father, as we pray for that justice, make us aware that we need your mercy if we're to be able to stand before the God of justice. Oh Lord, open the eyes of our hearts to see just who you are. We pray for those who would aspire to govern us and those who do govern us or seek to. Lord, humble them under your mighty hand and grant them a fear of God. And Father, we pray for our population in, in regard to the people that we vote into office. Lord, grant that a fear of God might come upon people as they cast those votes. A fear of God. And Father, we pray for those who seek to provide for our protection, that they might know your mercy and that you would grant stability in our land in these days. And that your church might be faithful in the place of prayer. Father, we think of the nations of the world in turmoil. Many in turmoil, 
many wondering how they might cope and how they might survive economically and how they might meet the current situation. And Father, we pray for that situation in Ukraine and Russia that impacts a whole world. And we pray for your mercy and your intervention. And we pray, Lord, to provide for the needs of a people that are being bombarded. We pray, Lord, grant stability, grant that homes might be rebuilt, grant that families might be knitted together again, grant that those that are grieving might be comforted, grant that the light of the gospel of Jesus would shine even more brightly than ever in Ukraine and Russia and in surrounding nations and raise up servants that will bring that message of hope in the gospel of Jesus. Our Father, we pray for loved ones this day that are feeling their frailty. And we pray as we name them before you, Lord, asking that you would strengthen them, that the touch of your hand would be upon them, grant healing to those that are ill, grant an awareness that healing comes from you, and that our days are numbered in the scene of time. And Father, we pray for the work among our children, our Sunday schools, our young people, thanking you for it. And we pray continue to bless these young lives and continue to, to make them a blessing unto us. And Father, we think too of the Leslie Reed and the family as they're back home here. And may it feel like home here for them as they spend months here and on leave and on deputation. And we think especially of the children as they move from one nation to another. May they feel at home. May you bless them with good friends that will be a help to them. And may you encourage them and watch over them. Lord, burden our hearts to pray more and more for your servants in different nations around the world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews 11, verses 32 to 34, face liberation or the, the freedom, the, the liberation that comes through faith in the living God, set free by God. And the writer to the Hebrews, who doesn't name himself in the actual letter, the writer to the Hebrews, as he listed many of those Old Testament characters, men and women of faith, but selectively listing them, then comes to verse 32, and what more shall I say? In other words, through the names he has already mentioned, through the lives that he has pointed us to, he has told us much about what faith looks like as it's lived out. Verse 32, what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and that reality of time running away from those that seek to bring a message from the word of God. Time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, they're not necessarily in chronological order or Barak would come before Gideon. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of the fire, fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war and put foreign armies to flight. And if he was to open out each of those lives mentioned, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and again, Samuel and David, the order would have been different. David, Samuel, and the prophets, just grouping all the prophets in that, that title, the prophets. If you were to open up all their lives and the example of what true living faith looks like, it would take a lot more time, he, he implies. And he's keeping this sermon, this letter is in effect a sermon and you can time how long that sermon would have taken if you read the whole letter. He's keeping it relatively short, in other words. What more shall I say? In re reference to Gideon, to Barak, to Samson, to Jephthah, to David, to Samuel, and even the prophets. And just if you even pause there and begin to think, what were these people actually like? Samson's name there. And you think of the mess of Samson's life. Jephthah's there. Read about Jephthah and the foolishness of a vow he made and the implication it had upon a daughter. Read of these people. These were not sinlessly perfect people. These were broken, mixed up, messed up sinners like me or you who believed in a God of grace, a God of salvation, and who are mentioned in this list of faith 
not because of their greatness, but because of the God in whom they trusted. The same as the others that have gone before them. And their sins are covered over in Hebrews 11. Not referred to, but their faith is referred to. And the God in whom they trusted, who through faith conquered. And we see this reality of the, the liberation that comes to the broken and the mixed up and the messed up. The liberation that comes as we believe God and take him at his word. And we see this place that God has provided as we think of the verses in Hebrews 11. They conquered kingdoms. Oh, it was in a, a piecemeal fashion when we read of the judges in the book of Judges. They did not take the land in the way that they were meant to, but God's place was there. God's land for them was there. God was expelling other nations out of that land because their sins had reached such a point that God could not tolerate. God's justice was coming. And the place was there for his redeemed for his people. They conquered kingdoms. When we think of Gideon, certainly we, we read of Gideon conquering the enemy in the strength of the Lord, not of Gideon's strength. And by faith, Gideon went and conquered kingdoms and others likewise. Even Samson, with his very dying act, brought victory to God's people. They conquered kingdoms, they established justice, they obtained promises. And so in God's place there is to be justice, in God's land there is to be justice, in God's kingdom there is to be justice. Justice or righteousness is to rule and to reign, for God is righteous. And when we think of Gideon and others that are named here going forth in faith to conquer kingdoms, how does that come about? When you go back to Judges 6, in verse 14, and the Lord turned to him and said, and the, notice when you read the call of Gideon in Judges 6, interchangeably it is the angel of the Lord and the Lord speaking. So in other words, the Lord is there in the form of the angel of the Lord. It is the son of God before he took the flesh of a man, appearing in the form of a man or of the angel of the Lord. And so the angel of the Lord, or verse 14 says, the Lord turned to him and said, it is explicitly, and the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours. And Gideon's feeling anything but mighty. And see of Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you. Where does his might lie? It lies in the word of God that sends him. It lies in the authority of the word of the living God that sends him. That's where his might lies. Gideon struggling and grappling with it, coming to terms with the greatness of what this word is telling him and feeling his weakness, and his weakness is real. But it is believing, even as he doubts to some degree, yet believes the word of the Lord and he goes forth and he does what the word of the Lord tells him to do, initially knocking down those idols, Baal and Asher, that the people, even his old father, had set up, tearing them down, so that God's rule would be established. God's righteous rule would be established. So that what was promised by God to Gideon would come to pass. And so they obtained the promises because of faith. Because they did what they were told to do. Because they believed the word of God. And so God's place has been transformed. And the seven years of Midian rule and overrun are now being changed. As Gideon leads the people under God's rule. And they see as well God's peace. In this, uh, 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 for peace, the place and the peace are intertwined here, by the way. But for God's peace, it needs more than just the absence of warfare or turmoil. It needs more than just the stopping of mouths of lions and the quenching of fire and the escaping edge of the sword. For peace, biblically, there needs to be a wholeness of life and there needs to be justice. For peace truly to abound, there needs to be justice and evil needs to be dealt with. That's why in our province, in our land, and in many lands around the world, when horrible things have happened, hearts cry out for justice. The human heart cries out for justice. Because we know without real justice, there will be no real peace. 
And yet when we delve into the wonder of that cry for justice, we come to realize if the light of the gospel is shining in, that as we cry for justice, thinking of maybe what others have done to us or to loved ones, the cry for justice brings us as sinners before a just and a holy God. And how can we stand? And the only way we can stand is by the mercy of God and by the offering of God's Son on the cross where he stepped in to take the justice that we deserved. And so peace can come. And you notice this how it worked in Gideon's example in Judges. The angel of the Lord speaks, God speaking. And then he wants to be assured, Gideon wants to be assured, so he tells the angel of the Lord, wait here, I want to bring an offering. And so he goes and slaughters a goat and brings it out in a basket as a fellowship meal offering. And he brings out broth and he brings out unleavened bread. It has taken time for all this to happen. The angel of the Lord has waited. And under this tree that was mentioned in Judges 6, this fellowship meal takes place. Now the Lord does not need strength from a goat or from bread. And so what happens at that fellowship meal? Fire comes and takes up the offering, consumes it. The holy fire of God consumes a sign in the Bible that this offering is acceptable, pleasing. And Gideon realizes he's in the presence of God. And to see God for Gideon or for us would be to perish. But God says, no, you will not perish. You will live. You will live. Peace be to you, the Lord said to him. And when we think of the peace that this foreshadows and points to this offering and the acceptance of Gideon through that offering and the, the Lord being pleased with it, how much more? Always think of that little phrase, how much more? As you think of what God does in and through the judges, how much more does God do for us in and through Jesus Christ? And the offering of himself being acceptable and he's raised up and vindicated by the Father and ascends into glory and he's there even pleading for us today. And how much more, how much more are we assured of peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ? God's peace. And by faith, mouths of lions were stopped, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword and, and peace has been established, a picture of peace as God liberates his people, as they believe in him, as they trust in him. God's place, God's peace. And it all comes about because of, thirdly, God's powerful presence, the presence of the Lord. As the angel of the Lord says in our English translation, five words, I will be with you. I will be with you. Gideon, you're feeling your weakness and your right to feel it. You're shaking as you think of your family and your household and your place in it. There is no might there. But I will be with you. I will be with you. And weak men and weak women were made strong by the Lord's presence. Became mighty in war. Put foreign armies to flight. Because of the powerful presence of God. Because God gave the victory. And Christian today, I imagine you feel your weakness. Well, if you don't feel it today, it'll not be long until you do. And these Hebrew Christians that the letter to the Hebrews is written to were feeling their weakness. Some of them were turning back to Judaism and to the old order of things, thinking that they had to stick to all the old order of, of ritual that was part of the old covenant. And they had turned their eyes away from Jesus. And they're being urged and encouraged to persevere in the faith and to keep on looking to Jesus and to learn from the example of those under the old covenant who have gone before us and showed us what it is to trust in the living God, to believe in him, to take him at his word and to depend on his powerful presence. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age as he commissioned his apostles and as he sends out his church in the present day, he is with us. It is his presence that makes the difference. 
So as ye go out into a week, and ye maybe go before those in your household who have little thought of God and maybe have backslidden away from the Lord. Think of Gideon. Think of others that are named in those verses, Hebrews 11, 32 to 34. Think even of Gideon and how his stand in the Lord's strength turned his father around toward the living God. The father who had set up Baal and Asherah images and with others in Israel were worshipping these false gods that turned from the living and true God. But Gideon now in, in, in trembling pulled them down and goes back home that night for fear of family and others around about. Does it at night, but does it because he believes. He believes God in his word and believes that God will be with him and believes that God will bring salvation. Gideon goes in his own weakness but in God's strength. And a father, an earthly father's life is turned around toward God because of the example of a humble son. And who knows what you might do in the lives of others and God might do through you in the lives of others as you take a stand for the Lord. As you take God at his word, as you believe him, as you trust him. Oh, maybe you've been disheartened by others around about you and your strength is crushed and you've lifted your eyes off Jesus. Oh, remember his promises. Remember his word to you and trust him, trust him. God's powerful presence makes all the difference in liberating and setting free a people who are capitulating. God's powerful presence. Think of Gideon's faith as in trembling. He went to the battle against the Midianites and the other nations that were there from the east. 135,000 of them. And he goes believing the word of God. Believing the word of God that God will bring salvation through him and these 300. And humanly speaking, it is all impossible. But by faith, he goes and he does and the 300 do what they're told to do. They believe God. They believe that God is, that God exists and he rewards those who seek him. They believe. And so a whole nation is strengthened to believe in the living God. And as you go out among your friends or your work colleagues and it feels like you are one against thousands at times, so few may be the voices for Jesus in the situation in which you work. But remember that he is with you. If you're his and seeking to honour him, he is with you, he's promised I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. And so while you may well feel outnumbered and you may well feel as if you don't have words to speak into the debates that arise in your college or in your community or in your workplace, then you might wonder what words to say. Well, just tell them that God is good. Tell them of the goodness of God. Tell them of the wonder of Jesus who laid down his life to save you. Tell them the simple, profound, mighty truths of the gospel. Just tell them that you are content in Jesus. Just lift high the name of Jesus. His powerful presence will transform lives around about you. Faith liberates us from all that ensnares us. And we are set free to worship God and to serve him. And to make him known. When Gideon built the altar, having pulled down Baal and Asherah images, these gods that were no gods, having pulled them down, and he offered that second bull in the altar, and that offering was acceptable to the Lord, and he, he called it the place, he calls this place where the altar was built up, the Lord is peace, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. And the writer of Judges said, to this day it still stands, back in that day it still stood. Peace, peace with God. Even when you go out into the midst of the difficulties of life, peace with God. His powerful presence making all the difference. Will you trust him to go before you and prepare the way for you? 
Don't be waiting. Gideon didn't wait in terms of going into the battle and tearing, tearing down those idols and then going and facing the Midianites and others with him. Didn't wait until he had a, a great a great mighty number of people with him that outnumbered the others. Didn't wait until he had a great strategic plan in place that, that seemed to make sense. He waited upon the Lord and did what the Lord told him to do. And as you go out to witness into the world, don't be waiting until you've got all the words sorted out and you think you're, you're able now to go and explain the gospel and to interact with people. Wait upon the Lord. Go in his strength, in other words. It'll not be with the wisdom of your words that you see people's lives changed. It will be with the power of God's word. The power of God's word. Just hold out the word of life. Hold out the word of life to others. Hold out the gospel to others. Same in your home with your family. Hold out the word of life. It's the word of God that will change lives. Hold it out. I'm thankful that I, as I grew up, there were those in my home, as well as within a church fellowship and other, other blessed ministries that you're brought along to, youth meetings and whatever else. But I'm thankful in my home, there were those that held out the word of life that believed this word of God had power. Had power. Because it is God's word. And may you believe that the word of God is power. And the gospel of Jesus brings peace to troubled hearts. Have you faith in the living God? Have you faith in the triune God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Do you enjoy his peace today? because he has reconciled you to himself through the blood of his son. Do you enjoy his peace, his wholeness? Do you know his nearness and his presence and the power of his might? As you feel your weakness and your knees tremble at many a thing you will face in the days of the next week. And as you go out into those situations, go praying. Pray as you go. Pray as you Enter into a conversation, just, just look upward to heaven. Doesn't need to be audibly heard by others around about you. Just pray, Lord, help. Help me to know how to listen. Help me to know how to speak. Help me to know what to do. Lord, help. Go in the strength of the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord and his strength. Not waiting until you've got a strategy worked out that you think will solve everything. Go in the strength of the Lord. We're going to sing in closing, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer.
the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Too far. We're in it every day. Wednesday, Wednesday night. Is there? I had it. In, I think I had it in the printed sheet last week, but I forgot that. I think I don't. I think I announced it last week. I see if there's any much. You check that out. Earlier, your daddy or, Dave, or Jim, I think Jim maybe does it as a song comes through, is it? Hey, Dorothy was there today. I'm not sure if he was in the back corner. There's a lot of people waiting in the back corner. I saw Dorothy. Uh, yeah. He may be waiting until, I don't know if it was done anything, but uh, does Dennis need to do something or is he has done everything that's needed? I chat to Jim about it and see just to get it moving. He probably told you, don't be me. Did he give off to you? <laughs> 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 he told me that, he told me. It's kind of him to make it, to make it possible. Uh, tell her not to be worried about that now. 